Hi everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our live stream, which is actually pre-recorded today again. Um, sorry folks, we'll explain it in a minute. To make one of these um, little blossom fairies, and this was our December fairy project. Um, December 2022 because we are now in January 2023 and of course we had our advent project um, to be getting busy with in December so our uh, December fairy is a little bit late and only appearing now in uh, January but nevertheless it's still very um, um, you know lots of blossoms are brooding under the earth and um, some of them are peeping through already, so still in time for all the exciting things to happen as we head towards spring. So the reason why this is pre-recorded again, and apologies, so I can't chat to anybody live here today. Um, and of course, if you're watching this anytime later on, um, other than the um, 10th of uh, December, then you won't mind anyway because um, um, it's never live when you watch it anyway. But we have just moved offices, a mega task, and um, I feel I need to be there today again. So I'm pre-recording this on the same day that it will be streamed. Um, and of course, it will also be repeated on our Facebook page, which is our main page, themakers.co.uk. If you um, uh, find us on, on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Thursday. And I think that will be, uh, let's have a look. I haven't even got the January dates up here. I'm so terrible at the moment, but um, that will be if today is the 10th, then it will be Wednesday is the 11th, the 12th of um of January 2023. You have to get used to saying that. Right, so let's have a look. This is the little fairy that we're doing. Um, I'll leave her here. Um, oh, I don't know, you can't see her there. But I'll leave her there. She comes out of the box, obviously, but I have already taken everything out of the box that um, was in the box. And I've done a little bit of preparation by cutting um, the structural felt that um, is in the box as well. So um, to because it's quite a long project, but I'll just give you a little view of what you get in the box. You've got, got your fairy instructions here, obviously. And then you will have had um, a 10 by 15 centimeter structural core sheet, but I have already cut this um, so I can make the plant pot quickly with you. And then you get all this lovely stuff in there, some beautiful curls. There's sort of a, a greeny, olivey, greeny, uh, browny color. You get some embroidered leaves. That's quite special for this box need those and then you have um, the color for the plant pot you've got the color for the soil um, you've got the color for the fairy um, and um, more here and then some of the um, um, little green leaves that you'll be making out of that green and the little cup and I'm just going to show you her um, a little bit closer up as well so she's got these beautiful curls hanging down from the plant pot as well as on her hair she's got a little cap on with uh, leaves at the top, like little little germinating leaves there. And then you're making blossoms to go onto that whole construction. And that all of this is held up by wire, which is of course in here as well. You didn't, weren't able to see that, but that makes the whole fairy and also the construct for the leaves behind it. And you're making the whole plant pot um, from scratch as well. So lots of uh, useful information in there and she sort of sits in there um, ready to pop out as uh, the spring is coming nearer and uh, maybe already you've got um, some blossom, blossom, blossoming, I can't even say it, um, uh, things happening inside your house. My hyacinths from last year, they're peeping out. So it's really lovely to see some of the um, new life coming into life. And uh, whilst I'm here, I just also want to tell you that it is now exactly um, 11 days before our uh, retreat, which is our winter retreat here at the Wilderness Center. And Colette, who is one of the tutors who will be teaching with me, she has made this amazing horse. And I thought I should uh, show it to you. It is not too late to grab a last minute slot. Um, so this is sort of roughly the size of the horse. It can be a much sturdier horse if you're making um, a, um, a less um, delicate or elegant horse as this one. Um, it can be a, a, a unicorn. It can also be any uh, fantasy horse with wings. We will help you make your 
force of desire um, by um, just helping you make the, the basic wireframe and then of course you can bulk it up or change the shape and um, and then give it the surface features, the colours that you want to. And this is absolutely made beautifully by Colette and she's actually needle felted the eyes so this might be something you're interested in is getting uh, needle felted eyes uh, going. We've often used glue in eyes but you can needle felt the eyes as well. There will also be probably a little bit of time to make your own curls if you want to for the main but we will bring many, plenty of things um, to, um, to this uh, retreat and I'll just flash the screen into here for a second um, if I've still got it here. Yes, I have. Here we go. That is the um, the details for the retreat. So do get in touch with us. We still have got spaces available, especially if you don't mind sharing a room. So that would be uh, fantastic if you can make it. And it is in the Wilderness Centre, which is in Gloucestershire, in the Forest of Dean. Um, and um, yeah, we're going to have fun with lots of uh, friends and fluff and food and um, we'll have lots of laughter. And most of all, we just leave the outside world locked away somewhere else and we will be all cozied up inside uh, a beautiful building with um, even more beautiful and astonishing surrounds. So do get in touch if you're interested in that. Right, let's make a start on this um, on the fairy I'm just going to go to the overview camera and um, I'm going to follow the instructions which um, seem such a long time ago since I wrote them but of course we've had Christmas we've had the new year we've had everything in between and I'm just going to grab um, the earth mat here by the way we have had a load of new earth mat um, de delivered but um, because we've been quite busy moving everything. I think they're going back online today because it's definitely one of our best-selling products and um, it seems to go out of stock as quickly as we put it into stock. Right, so for this you need um, to cut your piece um, out of the structural core as I've done already and then you're going to colour in one side of the plant pot. Now I'm letting um, some of these um, fibers sticking out because that will help me fuse the whole thing together. I'm just laying the, these out at the moment. That's some, the, the, the technique I'm using now I use quite often if I want to have an even cover and I'm just going to stuff these into place. So if you've got a multi-tool this is the time to bring it out. It's definitely a good way to use either your um, five needle tool the clover one or if you've got a three needle tool or even the mobile um, six needle tool and I'll show you the different tools in a minute so you can get an idea of course you will have the small felting mat in your fairy kit which looks like this and um, you will have to move your shape along it to felt it down but it works just as well just have to lift it off more often and move it along just for speed, I'm using a larger mat. This is our A4 um, Earth Friendly Felting Mat. It, look, it already looks loved and used. So um, when you first get it, it's immaculate. But um, once you start felting, you do get some contam contamination of fibers. And so this is the six needle mobile felting tool, which works quite well. Just really, really do mind your fingers. Don't get them anywhere near. And then add more wool where the gaps are. This way, if you add the wool this way, you make sure you get a nice thin cover, um, but also even. So it's almost like you're painting the wool on. Um, and I'm just going to show you the other tools that you can use. Put this away again. I do love this tool, I will be honest. And then I've got my Clover 5 needle tool and love this tool. This definitely works very well get the surface stub down. So you need to make it quite a neat cover all around the edges as well. So um, once you've got the um, top layered, then maybe go with your needle, single needle, further around the edges. I wouldn't worry too much at the moment at the bottom because we need to put a disc on there as well, but just get maybe get the wool fastened on a little bit. It looks quite weird from the other side because obviously the fibers get stuck through to the other side and keep adding wool to it so that you can prepare your 
terracotta plant pot, which of course is made from wool, sounds quite weird, um, and put it into place here. And um, if, if for whatever reason you haven't got it quite neat um, before you make uh, join the pot together, you can always adjust it still um, later. And I'm going to now twist this together so that um, the fibers that I have um, left sticking out at one end, put a few more there, have them sticking out a bit more so that you get a nice base to wrap around the join and then felt that down to fuse it. So I'm going to do this. So you can see these fibers that I've left overlapping. I'm now stabbing them into this part of the pot. So I want this to be a nice, neat uh, join. I don't want there to be a gap. So make sure that you really, really pull it tight to be able to stab into the other side. And stab the fibers down. And now <clears throat> all you need to do is neaten up the whole shape a little bit. You can also add more wool over there, obviously, because that will strengthen the join. Eventually you won't even know where it is. Mind your fingers when you have turned it into a round shape because don't have your fingers inside that um, tube because you will stab yourself. So be careful, keep them on the outside. And then you can cover the top of this pot with the wool as well. So you won't be using all of the wool, but um, um, ouch, a fair amount. See what I mean? So don't do that. It's just a very slight nip, fortunately. So you need to, you will need in this pot up a lot more than um, I, I'm doing right now to save a little bit of time and going quite fast. Keep your fingers out of the way. Don't worry too much if it looks unneat on the inside because you're not going to see any of that later. It will be completely stuffed with a brown wool. Just get the top covered now so that it is, um, it looks like a neat edge. And um, if you start from the inside to the outside, you'll find that the white fibers of the core wool will come, um, structural core will come through, so you might not want that. So another reason why not to start too much into the center right now. Let's get it all covered up, and we haven't put the bottom on yet. That's the next thing we're gonna do. Get the top edge nice and neat. I hope you've all been all right. Have you had a good uh, Christmas? I don't know about any of you, but it felt a little bit flat this Christmas uh, last year. I don't know if it's because it's been such a, I don't know, slog to get to it in many way. Um, it's been, there's been not the greatest news on, on, on the news everywhere, which, you know, you'd sort of try and block out but eventually catches up with you at some point um, and it just felt a little bit it felt a little bit flat for me but you might have had a very different experience in any case um, some people um, really don't like Christmas because they have to mix with family that they rather avoid then that always begs the question why do you have to but um, who knows what the driving factors are I'm lucky that I don't have to do this I think for me, it's just about finding that inner peace to actually stop for a very short time because I instantly feel bad. I should keep going because there's always so much to do. But then I am a little bit of a workaholic and um, I really love um, doing the work that I do. So when I don't do it, I feel a little bit bereft, but I also needed a break from um, everything that's been going on last year. So, um, yeah, it's that dilemma. Do I work? Do I not work? I need a break. Let's spend time together as a family. The weather wasn't so good in the UK. I don't know um, if it was better wherever you have been. Oh, oh and, the, and um, also I should say that um, what you probably expect right now is a giveaway post to come up as well because we will be starting that again, but we haven't done so yet. So this disc needs to sit inside the gap. 
And if you've cut it out a little bit too big, as I have done, then just make it now smaller to fit inside that shape. It needs to sit inside exactly here. And then you can cover that up with wool as well. Maybe stuck into the sides first to just get it fastened on a bit. And then cover it up with wool. Now you can adjust the shape on um, the outside by stabbing on the inside in a minute. Um, which of course, because you're, if you're stabbing on the, uh, from the inside to the outside, it will um, probably have white fibers coming through, but then you won't be able to see it because it will be completely covered by sitting on it. Um, the, it's always better to have it slightly indented than bulging out because with a slight indent, it will sit neatly, but with a bulging out, it will wobble. So it will be an uneven base but you can stab on the inside for this one because that will also help it to take shape. And I'm just fastening this on some more. I think I'm going to uh, call this little pot done, even though it could do with a lot more fine felting down, getting some of these fibers felted down. Um, which you might take a little bit longer to do. But this is a very simple way of make of to make a container and it is slightly curved, so it's slightly um, conical like this. That's what it's meant to be. Um, and you can emphasize that by just stabbing more into the area that you want to shrink down as well. You could even add another layer of wool here around the top to make it look more like a plant pot. You've got plenty of wool left, but I won't be doing that. I'm just going to put this to one side now because I'm going to start on the fairy. But before I do this, I just show you the pot so you can see it a little bit better. It's um, it's it's a really the structural the new structural core that we have got is is really good for making um, solid um, because it's quite thin but it's very strong and as you know it's made in the UK um, and it's um, it's made from wool so there you go that's what the pot looks like at the moment it's a nice solid shape and it stands absolutely perfectly uh, flat so quite happy with that. Yeah, looks about similar to the one that I did earlier. So that's always a good thing uh, to check that I'm heading in the right direction. Now I put my cup of tea down somewhere and I will be having a cup of tea because whilst I'm recording this, it's only just getting light and um, everybody needs a cup of tea in the morning. Well, at least I do. Okay, right, let's um, move on to the fairy. So before you start, you cut your wire into eight centimeters, which is the head, 13 centimeters, which are the arms, and 15 centimeters, which is the leaves, um, um, which you need for the leaves to support the leaves. It's a really thin um, wire. It's our thin paper covered wire. Let's um, do this together. So I'm gonna measure it um, on the instructions here. So it was um, eight centimeters for the head, which is there. It's, a, it's such a thin wire that I can very, very easily use the, my scissors without a bad conscience. Then 13 centimeters for the um, arms, is that correct? And that should be 15 centimeters, yes it does. Okay, so the longest part you're gonna have to put to one side because that's gonna be for later on for the leaves. So I'm going to put the, that to one side. And what I'm going to do now is because you're not going to be able to see very much what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of purple felt here on my mat um, so you can see what I'm doing next with these two wire legs. So the shorter wire here is going to be the one that I'm going to make the head with. And for this, I need the pink wool. This is a mountain sheep. And um, if you don't know this yet, but um, we've I've resorted a lot to using glue to get the um, wire to um, the wool to stick to the wire and I'm just going to insert the end of that wire into my glue stick love these glue sticks so this is the stick it glue stick that we use to get the wool to grip into it this is this uh, could potentially a little bit messy on your fingers but so I build the wool up at the end of the wire then I'm going to bend the wire in to trap the wool I keep my wool flat like a ribbon. Uh, a lot of this I have done so many times in previous fairy 
instructions. So if you ever need to um, see a slower version of it or um, um, a different version of it, do feel free to uh, check our YouTube channel. Remember to like the video. We would really appreciate if you could give us the thumbs up. And uh, as soon as you've got a little bit of wool on there, you might want to felt it down. It is quite a coarse wool, so you might be used, if you're doing our fairies, to work with a slighter, finer wool. But you have got a coarser needle in your fairy kit this time as well, because there's quite a lot of felting. Of course, you can use your own needles um, if you have got them. You don't need to use the needles that come in the kit. Um, you will might find that you've got favorite needles and they work faster. But in any case, make sure that the um, wool that you're building up into a head does not slip down the wire. So I, the way that I do it, first of all, I tease off a strand of wool. So you sort of find a natural grain how the wool runs. Smooth the fibers out and then really tightly wind them around flat like a ribbon. And I'm holding my finger in place, my fingers in place here to stop the wool from slipping down. And then you um, um, use your felting needle and you stab into it initially, probably best from the base. Mind your fingers. It is quite a small scale we're doing here. It's quite a small fairy. Not just because only half is protruding, but it's actually quite a small um, design. So get this wool felted down, then felt it all over. You have a wire inside, so be careful not to break your needle, even though it's a very thin wire. The needle still won't like it and get that head felted down so that it becomes nice and solid. Now the size of the head, the finished size of the head needs to be about two centimeters so I'm a little bit off that size so it's slightly smaller than what we normally do and so I'm going to add another layer over it nice and tight and Take your needle to felt it down. So if you felt underneath first, that will maintain the round shape because you're um, stabbing away the edges that um, the edge that you've built up by wrapping it. And um, it also makes sure that it doesn't slip down the wire because you do need a, a length of wire to stick out from the head because that is where the arms get fastened to. Okay, get it felted down. over. Love that noise. So I don't know how you all spent New Year. Um, it was again, it was quite a quiet affair. I was, the, the worst thing about New Year, in my view, is that you have to stay up until midnight. Well, I suppose you don't have to, but um, it seems that seems to be the thing. And um, I'd, I'm not really a party person, I will be honest. I don't, I cannot drink alcohol. It just doesn't agree with me. So the slightest bit of alcohol is like, um, makes me want to go to bed and sleep, which, um, yeah, I'm much more fun without alcohol, definitely. And um, my, I feel like going to a party is not really my thing. So it usually gets um, sat out at home, waiting patiently for the minutes to tick away until you're allowed to go to bed. And then, of course, once you, once you can go to bed, I can't go to sleep because I'm wound up about having just toasted the new year. So there's no winning in that either. Um, anyway, this is now what um, the, um, um, the head looks like. And I'm just going to make sure it has at least one part of the face needs to be felted down really um, firmly and looks really smooth because that's going to be the one where... Um, we're going to put the, the feature. So you can rub it in your fingers a little bit to smooth down some of the um, um, rough fibers that are sticking out. But that is basically the head that we're going to put to one side. And now with the arms, we're starting exactly the same way as with the head. But because you've practiced on the head, now you can make that first layer really thin because you're not building bulk, you're just covering the wire now. So I just put a little bit of um, glue on there, take a tiny amount of wool, and you're only doing the hands of the fairy. Just double checking. Yes, only doing the hands of the of the fairy because we use another wool for the arms. So wrap the wool around the end as you did with the head. 
just really nice and, and neat and thin layers because the, the neater and the thinner you do this, the neater the hands will look. Then bend the end in by about half a centimeter and then cover over the uh, bent wire end just a little bit more until you've got a nice little hand built up there and then let the wool, you can let it fizzle out um, over the wire. You could even add a tiny dab of um, glue at the end here so that the wool does not undo itself. Come on, come out there, there. And then just let all of this part of the um, hand will be covered with a, um, or the arm I should say, will be covered with another wool. So you can just tidy it away, just let it fizzle out. There we go. As long as this part here is nice and neat, it doesn't matter so much what this looks like. But uh, do make sure it doesn't unravel itself. And then you repeat the same thing on the other side. And build another hand up at the other end of the wire. The more fairies you do, the better you get at making the features nice and nimble. Um, not nimble, but small. You need nimble fingers, that's what I meant to say. So you will be getting um, better and better at it the more you're making. And let that wool disappear here as well. It's still quite sticky. If you um, are trying to let the wool grip into itself, then you have to wind it around itself. Don't let the last end be finishing on the wire. It won't grip to the wire by itself unless you put glue on there. Right, set of arms. Um, and now we need to cover them up with uh, this beautiful um, orange blossom merino silk mix. Absolutely love this. So you, you're going to now just add wool onto the end of the arms, which leave the hands obviously like little pink hands free and then wrap the wool around the remainder, but keep the center of the um, whole set of arms unwrapped because uh, we need to use that to um, wind around the pipe cleaner that comes from the head. So the, the main thing is that you are keeping this wool nice and tight and flat like a ribbon. I can't repeat that enough. Um, and then you should have no problem whatsoever to make a neat finish of an, of an arm here. You don't even need to needle felt it. There you go, nice and, nice and even and neat. And then you repeat this on the other side. Let's do it here as well. Wind that around. Oh, that needs to go up a bit more. That's a little bit too much hand showing. It needs to be the same as on the other side. And going round. It's so worth just getting it right and not rushing it and um, and just taking your time. To work neatly and if you're not happy with it then unwind it and start again you have enough wool to do this again and let the last bit of wool fizzle out around itself rather than hanging just off the wire and so you've got a set of arms here with a little gap in the middle and all you're going to do now is you're going to wrap the arms around the main body pipe uh, uh, wire I'm actually going to do this twice because then um, I've got a really nice tight wrap and you can make sure that the arms are the right length. There. So that's wrapped around um, the main wire here now. And uh, now all I need to do is dress the fairy. I've got to use the same orange wool. This will also now obviously um, at some point stop the arms from um, slipping down and you 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 t you basically um use more generous wraps now because you make you're trying to build bulk quicker and it doesn't have to be so neat and tight anymore 
um, but you are going to you you're going to felt it down as soon as you've built up some bulk, which I, I'm not ready to do that yet. And the upper body needs to be about two to two and a half centimeter in width. And um, uh, no, sorry, the, this needs to be two to, by two and a half centimeters, and the body needs to be one and a half centimeter in width. Sorry, I got the measurements muddled up. So um, go down the body by about two to two and a half centimeters. And then the, the body itself needs to be about one and a half centimeters. So at some point, we also need to go over the shoulders. But at the moment, I'm literally just felting this wool down so that it doesn't slip. Don't worry too much about the end here because that's going to be inside the plant pot. And um, we're going to do something else to it in a minute. So I'm just felting the wool down now. You can hear the wire as I hit it with the needle is not so good. I'm just going to check where it says to go around the shoulders. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure it does say that, but what you do need to do is, unless I can't find it, you do need to go because at the moment you've got a very distinct gap between the body and the and the arms you do also need to go and co cover um the area around the head sorry below the head and um the shoulders so that you incorporate the arms properly into the body so do that whilst you're working on the upper body as well and felt it down and then you may need to add some more layers because you might have felted it down so much that it's too small now. So I'm just going to add another very thin layer for now. I'm just going to go around this part here and above the arms again. Do that again and around the body. Felt it down. So at the moment it looks like quite a long shape, but um, something else we're going to do in a minute that will completely change it. Because rather than just filling the plant pot with brown wool, we are um, and then putting the fairy in, it will be hard for for the fairy to get stuck in there. So we're going to already add the brown wool to the bottom of the fairy, and then it will literally the the wool. The brown wool will fit around the fairy and then inside the plant pot. So this is what we're going to do. So that's why you don't need to worry about the end bit here. Um, you can um, now just take some of the brown wool and you want to wrap this around the base of the fairy. But you do want to have about one centimeter of the upper body exposed still. So um, bend the arms up out of the way and just wrap the brown wool around the base of the fairy. You can stub it down a bit. This is a this is this wool is a, a Portuguese merino. It's very short fibered, but it really sticks well to itself. So you probably don't need to do very much in terms of felting it down. So basically, whatever you keep exposed up here now is what's going to be visible um, at the end when it sticks out of the plant pot. And so you build more wool up until. You do the test on the plant pot now. And that wire up here, down here is still sticking out. You can bend it in, but you're going to put your fairy in there and you're just going to see how it looks. Okay, so that needs a little bit more because she's sort of sinking down at the moment. We want her to be nicely fitting in there. And um, so you might have to just adjust how much wool you put on her. Um, so what you do later, you are going to felt down into the in into it as well, so that um, you've got the wool, that it will sink down a little bit more. So you might have to um, make sure that you've got a lot of this um, wool here at the bottom as well. Um, you can even stuff a bit of wool inside the plant pot already if it's too deep for your fairy then put her in again. It's better for the wool to stick out at the top because you're going to felt this down um, than it 
already sinking in. So um, you've got plenty of the brown wool. Make sure it's a nice firm and solid fit. I'm going to flip this down a little bit already so I don't have too much shrinkage later on. And then I can add more wool. So you don't, you don't want the fairy to flop around in there. So make sure she's firmly placed inside that plant pot when you fit her in. I've just put a bit of brown wool in there. I'm going to add a bit more just to pad out the bottom. I don't think it says that on the instructions, but it's kind of common sense because you do want the fairy to sit in there nice and firmly. And like I say, you have got plenty of this brown wool. Um, so let's get her fitting nicely in there. Okay, so I'm going to put her in there and see if she fits. That's, I'm not going to fasten her on in there yet because I need to work on her still. But that seems a good fit. So I'm going to leave that like that now. Make sure it's felted down a bit more so it doesn't come off. And I'm going to work a little bit more on her now. So I've got my pot and the fairy, a good match to fit in. I'm going to put the pot back to one side and now I'm going to get out these lovely curls. So the, she has got just very, very few curls sticking out from under her little green cup, which we're going to add later. But um, um, I'm just noticing that my wire is slipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the wire out at the bottom. I'm actually going to bend it down so that uh, the head doesn't um, move. It's very slippy wool, the, um, um, these, these merino silk um, uh, bats. Right, I'm going to show you this whole thing here now. So there's the pot, there's the fairy. I have to squeeze her in, but it's a good firm fit. I don't want to do that now because I have to pull her out again. But this is how she looks right now. So about one centimeter above the brown soil is sticking out and um, and the rest is, is now covered in brown wool. Um, so let's go back to the overview scene. I hope you're all having a nice chat here. Um, oh yes, what I was going to say is the giveaway is not, um, I got completely distracted earlier. The giveaway that we do normally is not happening today. Um, um, we will start again next week. What I'm doing right now is I'm cutting nice um, curly bits that I like rather than the frizzy bits. There, there might be sort of frizzy bits on the curls, but I'm, I'm cutting curly bits and I'm going to attach them just to the side of the fairy. If you have curls and they're stuck together, then always cut, cut them apart rather than pulling them because you just pull the curl out and you make the curl frizzy. If you want that to be, then obviously do whatever you like. But right now I'm just felting the curls down on the side of the head so that they, when I add the cap in a minute, um, I have the little curls hanging down. Do that on both sides. Frame the face as we usually do with our fairies. We always frame the face first and then sort out the rest. And then I'm even going to put a little bit of curl hanging down into her face. So at this point, I haven't added a face. Some of you don't like adding faces, and that's absolutely fine. So you don't have to add eyes um, or anything like that into your fairy. That's entirely optional. So you can do this at any point later still, if you haven't decided yet either. Okay, here we go. I feel that next week is probably when I'm fully back in fun functioning mode again. I'll just give you an idea of um, what's happening next week. I haven't got the thumbnail up. I actually didn't do it. But next week we will be making our toadstool fairy together, which is a little figurine and she's fully supportive um, on, on, a, on a felted together felting mat, which you, of course, get in your um, fairy kit. So... Um, she's definitely a really beautiful fairy, uh, quite a different design, so it's going to be fun trying something new. Right, going back to um, our little fairy here, she looks like that from the front and like that from the back. Um, so at the moment, you could still use either, but I'm going to felt a little green cap onto her yet. And um, I'm just going to show you how to do this now. So you use a small pinch of the green wool like that 
and um, and fold it in half like this. So I've got I've got a folded edge here at the top and the wispy fibers here at the bottom. And now I'm going to lay that folded edge over the over the head of the fairy so that the edge the folded edge is at the front framing the face. And I'm going to felt this wool down now. Not stabbing into the edge just yet. I'm just going to felt it down all around the head. When you felt into the uh, green wool and into the head, don't felt too deep because you don't want the green wool to come out in her face. So make sure you don't do that. But just felt it down so that it's fastened on briefly. This is the back of the fairy you can see now. So she's got um, the little cap at the moment on her head. And just felt it down gently, not too deep. Remember, the wool can come out at the other end. She's got a very tiny face. I've given, I've covered it a lot with curls, but I can still felt all of this back. At the moment, I just need to get the, the cup felted down. Lots of little stabs. And felt that down all around so that it's a neat shape around her neck. You do want that. But keep the stabs shallow. Don't stab too deep. Don't want them coming out the other end. So you're literally sculpting that little cup onto the fairy by stabbing it into, in, into the green wool and around her head. I still haven't stabbed into the uh, front of the cup because what I want to do is in a minute I want to make sure that, that um, the green cup is on there properly first. If you haven't used enough green wool then take a little bit more and cover the area that's not covered yet. Um, this is this is a very uh, similar technique as we've done it before with uh, the ladybird fairy. I don't know if any of you remember that. Now when you get to the front of the uh, cup Stab into that area between the curls and the um, and the green wool to make a really nice neat edge. You don't want it to be fuzzy or it looks like it's fused to the curls. You want it to be a, a cup, dis distinct, a distinct shape away from um, the uh, the curls. And then just stab this down. And so you should now have a nice little cup here sitting on top of your fairy's head. And then what we want to do is we want to make a couple of leaves. Um, and these are done by taking a smaller wisp of the green like this. Then you fold that in half and then you shape one end so that you've got a nice leaf shape here. And then you stab that down flat on your mat. Remember, you have to lift it off your mat regularly and just stab it into a nice little leaf shape, keeping one end wispy. Um, again, just shallow stabs, keep turning it, stabbing it, turning it. I haven't actually quite got the right needle here, keep changing from one to another. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, that's better. You have a medium needle in your in your fairy box. Um, I, I haven't I haven't been using a medium needle. I've, I've used a coarse needle, but that's too coarse now. And then I've been using a fine needle and that's too fine. So your medium needle will be absolutely perfect. So you make a, a tiny little leaf like this with wispy ends and then you make another one exactly the same way. They don't have to be exactly the same size. So... You sculpt the leaf literally whilst you're felting it on your felting mat. Lift it off, turn it round, and then do the same again. So I've got my felting mat, I've got the soft part at the moment at the top. Sometimes when felting flat things, you might want the firm part. Um, in any case, I have put the purple on there for a... Um, a contrast so you can see it better when I was doing the wire work. However, if you want to keep your felting mat 
clean, then you can use these felt sheets anyway to have them on top. We do sell them on our website as well. We use this felt all the time for our um, 2D needle felting and for making little clothes. So once you've got two leaves like this, you're going to fasten them to the fairy now. Um, but first of all, you're fastening them to each other first. So you're joining them together like this. So you've got like two little rabbit ears sticking up, one slightly smaller than the other. Just get them felted together. So you've got now one stalk instead of um, bits sticking out on, on both of them. So keep the leaves separate, but join the wispy ends together. And again, just make sure that you do shallow little stabs. So you've got a little uh, um, pair of leaves here. And then you open up these wispy fibers yeah, in all directions. And that now gets fastened onto the fairy. You can put that to slightly to one side. So get it um, felted on first so you can let go of it. And then you can shrink it down a little bit more and make it a bit neater and show those leaves off a bit better. Just make sure you don't stab yourself. You can even stab into the middle of those two leaves to make them a bit more distinct again if need be. In any case, you're fastening on little um, sprouting leaves onto the uh, little cup of the fairy. So you need to stab it from all directions. So you now have got a little shape, a little um, sprouting leaf shape coming out of the fairy's hat here. There you go. And um, and now basically if you want to give the fairy eyes, um, um, you can use the same brown that you used for the for the base here. Just take tiny tiny amounts. I can't stress that enough. It's often what uh, goes wrong is when you take too big amounts um, and you're making the features too prominent. It's very fiddly, but you can just do very tiny amounts and stab them in for an eye. Make sure you don't catch the curls in the process. That's another thing that can happen quite easily, especially when you've already put the face on that suddenly you've, you've got other fibers running through the face that can also distort it. So make sure it's very clean what you're felting down. And then repeat on the other side, tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Sometimes it works best to screw it up in your fingers and then um, scrunch it up and then put it at the tip of your needle and then um, put it into place and then felt it on. Try and make two the same size. So that's the eyes. And now you're going to, um, you can use uh, just a tiny bit of the um, orange fiber here for a mouth will be a contrasting enough color. You can even give a little rosy cheeks with that color wool. Or you could use a bit of blusher, especially if you've had our advent project, you will have blusher now. So just give her a tiny, tiny little face. Um, less is always more with um, a fairy like this. So there she is. She's a happy little soul with um, happy to come out of that little plant pot in a minute and um, and then you're going to have to fasten her into the plant pot but before you do this you prepare your um, embroidered leaves with little blossoms and I'm going to show you how to make one I won't be doing um, lots of them because it's um, they take is despite them being so small they take quite some time now I'm going to show you here you can make them in with um, with orange and a brown basis, or you can make them in pink with green, or you can make them in pink with brown, or you can make them in orange with green. It's entirely up to you how you want to design your little um, blossoms on, on this uh, leaf uh, shape here. And um, I'll show you how to do it. So you take whatever color you want to take, because you will have... Um, you will have all the colors left over. You've st still got all these colors to make all this wool to make little blossoms. All of this wool is spare. So let's um, let's do an orange one. Let's take a little bit of the orange and I'll roll it into 
a ball shape so I'm literally or into it um, it won't be quite round it will be more oblong than round there and then all I'm going to do is I felt it down definitely won't work with a coarse needle felt it down in all directions so I've got a, a little um, bean shape Again, this is this is work where you can easily stop yourself. So be careful with your fingers. Keep turning it so it stays round. You don't want it to go flat. Felt it down. And once you've got a little bean shape, then you're going to wrap. Well, let's use green. Then you're going to wrap the um, one end with a little bit of green or brown. So it, it looks a bit like an acorn, actually. And then felt that down too. So that is the um, that is where the blossom is coming out of that green shape, or you can use brown. And neaten that up, but don't stop yourself. So you can still step into the blossom. You can step uh, distinctly into the side. Um, sometimes the um, the blossoms come out of of the leaf, and it's sort of it's quite um, a transitional, um, not like an acorn. It's very distinct in a cup. With blossoms, they often have more of a transition, so it doesn't matter if the green looks a little bit more wispy around the edges. And then you're going to take that piece of um, embroidered flowers, and you could position. You decide where the where the blossom will sit. Felt it onto the fabric. It's, it has got a little netting around it, but you can also go into the embroidered part of it. Felt it on. It will just stay on and stick out a little bit. You can also, if you want to add a tiny bit of wool from the other side, if you want to make it extra, felt it on. So I'm using a bit of green and I felt into the green part of the blossom felt it down so that you've got um, the blossom securely felted onto your con construction of leaves here. And then you can add as many as you want in, in the different colours that you want. And uh, basically what you need to do next is you need to thread the, uh, uh, the wire that is still left over. You need to thread it from the back through the, um, the lace here. So that um, now what can, can happen is because it's paper covered, what can happen is that the paper actually comes away naturally. If that is the case, keep the uh, wire bare. I'm going to see what happens. But I'm, I'm starting at the base around here. So wherever you go, um, make sure that the, the, the bulk of the wire is actually showing at the back rather than at the front because you don't want it to be visible from the front. So thread it through the lace fabric and if if the wire becomes bare then just take the paper off it's fine go through the main stalks main um so the main part of the leaf so it holds that main part up and when you get to the top so just doing this is holding it now um, then you, you're twisting um, the wire in at the top, so just turn it in on itself. This is from the back, what you can see here. Turn it round, and then you have an, a, an end of the wire there. And um, that end now needs to go behind the fairy, like this. There. And you're going to take a little bit of brown wool, cover it up do a whole wrap if you want but felt it down remember that's a wire so try not to stop straight into it but you are felting it basically onto the fairy on the back so you now have got the whole lot that fits into the pot now all joined together I'm just going to felt this down so you're not adding bulk you're just literally adding a layer of brown wool to fasten the wire onto the fairy. There we go. And that will, once it's in the pot, um, hold up the whole 
um, construction here at the back. So insert it into the pot. Here we go. She's in there. Pull her out a bit. Adjust the wire behind. And now you can felt into the brown wool. Because you, now you're felting it in a little bit more all around. And you can add more brown wool to firm up the whole construction. Because you've got the wire, you can bend this into, into different directions. I'm going to add a bit more wool here at the back. I'm going to felt this down quite firmly now. And that will also stabilize the wire that runs along um, the leaves. So I'm just felting that down really solidly. Just make sure you don't felt the fairy down um, into the pot. You, she needs to stick out enough so that she's nice and visible. But you can stab quite firmly into the top of the pot now to felt the, um, the wool, sorry, to felt the, the leaves down a bit more. And then um, as an extra feature, because you've got lots of curls, you can have these curls spilling out of the plant pot however you want. So have them, felt them down as an extra bit of like little little tentacles coming out of the pot. You don't need to use all of them, but you can if you want to. And remember, you will have more blossoms on your leaves here than I uh, felt it on because I don't want to um, make lots of them. I'm showing you how to make one. You can do the others now. And there you have it. Your little fairy in the plant pot, your blossom fairy, is now ready to sit somewhere pretty. Um, maybe she fits onto the windowsill with all your other plants. But she, there she is. Um, you might have a slightly different, if you look at both of those um, leaf constructions, you might ha have a slightly different one. They, they, they all come a little bit differently shaped. So you might have a um, one with more leaves or less leaves. But um, in any case, two now. Um, and I'm quite pleased with uh, both of them. So they look, of course, always completely different. But here you have it. Both, both of them are done now. This is the one that I've just done. This is the one that um, you saw me hold up earlier. So these are the, um, this is the completed tutorial from beginning to end um, to make these uh, blossom fairies. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm, I'm really, really sorry I haven't been able here um, to have a chat with you today, but hopefully you're chatting lots amongst yourselves and do tell each other how your Christmas is and whatnot was. Um, I haven't got anything visual to show you, but I will just tell you that we have got so many new kits in the making, including a swan kit that um, is actually, st I'm starting this um, as a workshop this weekend um, at a local um, wetland uh, um, centre at Slimbridge. So that's happening on the 14th of January. Um, I'm not sure that you can still book onto it, but that is uh, basically happening. And then um, there will be a, a new mole kit. There will be a Mac mouse, which is basically a Scottish take on our mice. Um, we will also have a um, cosy cottage. Have you got your cosy cottage kit yet? Um, that's definitely one of the live streams that we're doing um, on, I think that's on the 25th of January. Um, so not next week, but the week after. And you can get that kit. It's available now to purchase from our website. Um, it's a beautiful, a really lovely little um, cottage, a needle felted, and it sits on a wooden disc. Again, I haven't got anything visual for you, but do get your kit if you haven't got it yet, and we'll make the whole thing together on the 25th. And next week, don't forget, tune in to make the um, Toadstool Fairy. This, of course, is our January Fairy Box. You can buy this right now as I speak from our website. And um, I think that's there's other kids that are coming out that I can't even remember now what they are. But um, yes, lots of new stuff happening. Um, some very exciting news in the pipe pipeline as well. I'm currently working on the Percy the Park Keeper kit because that is um, a new license that we have um, signed um, for um, for uh, uh, needle felting and other craft kits. So watch this space as well. And uh, something else that's um, coming is a very special sheep and that's all I'm going to say. 
anyway, that's all from me today. Happy New Year, if I haven't said that yet. And I will um, see you next week. Promise I will be in um, life next week. So um, take care until then. Lots of love. Bye-bye.